Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Well, it's graduation time again, so I thought I'd do a fast graduation card here for you. So, pretty straightforward. Text, 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 and some fancy effects here on this text, and also a fancy custom background in there. Okay, pretty straightforward as I say. This is a pretty quick one, so let's go ahead and get to work on this. We'll start off with a new file here, file new, blank file. I'm leaving this at the Photoshop Elements defaults, which is 6x4 at 300 pixels, and it is the horizontal mode, width and height. There we go. First thing I want to do is to put in that background, that kind of fancy ray effect background. Pretty easy to do, but it takes a little bit of setting up to get this thing proper. We first need to put in two different gradients. We're going to be doing a light blue to dark blue gradient and then a medium to blue gradient as well. So a couple of different gradients in here. This is going to be radial gradients going from the bottom and then up. So the lightest part will be down here and then darker as we go out from that bottom point. Okay, let's go over here to the gradient tool and let's get the basics set up here. We're going to be using full opacity, transparency and dither is fine, mode normal, and then you want the radial gradient right there. Okay, let's now set our colors in. Go over here to color and on the first one we're going to be doing a lighter blue to light blue going from the center up here. Now you can choose your blues. Just go up here to the blue section in here and then choose a light blue here and a little bit darker blue over in here. The colors I actually used, let me just type those in so you can see what we have in here. That's C4D9EE. -E. This is it's grayed out just a little bit, which kind of helps to push it into the background. So that's one color. And then our background color in here. I'll type this one for you as well. This is F4F9FF. And much, much lighter as you can see. So we have these two colors in here. Very, very light. Almost white, but not quite. And then a darker blue. So two very, very light colors in here. This will create our gradient. And as you can see, the default gradient in here is foreground to background on that. And if I just come down here to the middle of the page, let's actually find the exact middle. Now we're six inches wide, so I'll grab the ruler from the left hand side, pull it in towards the middle. It should snap right onto your center point. So that gives us the actual center right down there at the bottom. So if I take my gradient tool, grab right down there, click and drag up to this corner, I get this kind of a gradient. Now it's going dark to light, so you can see what happens is it is pulling the gradient from the foreground to the background. So let's just reverse that. Easy to do. Click on the little reverse option here. And then same thing. Right down there and drag up here. Foreground to background. You can now see how it's almost white down here. It kind of fades up into blue up around like that. Okay, that's our first layer. We need a second layer now. There we go, layer two. And we'll do a new gradient here on layer two. So let's do our foreground color, and on this one it's a little bit darker than we had on the previous one. So the numbers here are DBE8, F5, and our background color in here is A4, C, D, F, E, again a bit darker on that. So we're going kind of a medium to a little bit of a darker color. Same exact thing. Make sure you're on your new layer up here and click right down bottom center. Drag up to that corner. 
and it gives us a second layer that's a little bit darker than the first layer, a little bit richer than the first layer. So there's our two layers. Now we need to come in and find where we're going to be placing in our ray strokes on this. And that's also pretty easy to do. I'm just going to put in guidelines in here. And I want to have one ray right in the middle center. And I want to have these guidelines approximately a half inch wide. It doesn't need to be exact, but approximately a half inch wide. So if we have our beginning set here, then I want to go a quarter inch to the left and a quarter inch to the right on this. And so I'll pull in a guideline here. Puts what just about 275 and at about three and a quarter, which is right about there. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect on this. That'll be our first ray position. Then a half inch from here is two and a quarter. So I'll pull a guideline in the two and a quarter. And then a half inch here is one and, and three quarters. So I'll drag that in. There we go. And our next one is at one and a quarter like that, then three quarters, there we go, and the final one is just at one quarter. So these are all half inch wide. Same thing on the right hand side, again we're just going to be going half inch over, so that's three and three quarters, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, five and a quarter, and the last one is at five and three quarters. Now, if you want to have these perfectly exact, you can go up here to the view menu, click on new guide, and then type in the exact position in here if you want to. You have that ability. Let's say I wanted to put these things in at exactly half inches on the horizontal scale. I'll type in one at 0.5. That's a half inch. And there is a half inch down exactly. So you can put them in that way as well if you want to just be real, real specific about this. Next one will be at one inch. There we go. But I'm just going to drag these and this is faster. So this on the vertical here, the, the horizontal lines coming down vertically one and a half and two which is centered and two and a half and three and the final one at three and a half. So this gives us a grid with half inch spacing and with the middle one centered on the center of the page up here. Now we're going to be coming in and taking out parts of this top layer. We'll actually be deleting part of that top layer. So grab the polygonal lasso tool, come down to the middle down here, click there, drag up to the top right there at that corner, click here, come over to this next line, click and back down to this point again, and then hit the delete key and that just deletes out that segment. Come down here where it says Polygonal Lasso Tool. Click on the New, and we'll just be doing the same thing and moving this over each one of these sections. So click at the bottom. There we go. Click at that half inch mark at the top, and come down to the bottom, and Delete Key. Same thing. Click at the bottom, there we go. Half inch mark over to that half inch mark and back down to the bottom and delete. You see what we're doing is we're cutting holes in the top layer showing the bottom layer through. And I'll just work on through. Now this one you come over to the corner, come down to this, this half inch down here and then come in at that point and then delete. You can click inside to Remove that, deletes it, deselects it, and then do the next one over, which is these two. And we're just going to repeat this process, clear along this whole side, and then do the same thing on the other side. So you see what I'm doing here? Pretty straightforward. And I'll go through and do the same thing down here, and then the same thing on that side. So I'm going to pause the video at this point and finish off those rays, and then I'll bring the video back up again. And there we go. You can see now why I split this one up here and overlapped the center of the page. I did that so that these corners would match exactly and that down at the bottom that would match exactly as well. So that's why we did that split in that middle one. Okay, now I'm going to make a copy of this layer just like that because I put some work onto that layer so I want to have a backup copy and that'll be this one down here. I'm going to call this one Raise Hard 
and this one will be our raise soft. That way if I'm not happy with the effect up here, I can always go back and make a new copy for my raise hard copy. So I like making protection copies like that whenever I need to. Now on this we're going to be blurring out the edges of the rays and we no longer need these guidelines so I'll hide those guides, get those out of the way. So we're going to blur these edges. I mean you may like it like this, you may want this harder to look, that's fine. And that's actually how I originally designed this. And I'm putting in this, this kind of a faded effect as just an additional option. So this is kind of option one and ray soft would be option two. For this let's go up to filter and blur and we'll be doing a radial blur on this. Here we go. Now on the radial blur, let's set the amount at 5, so it's not very much, and then this is the center point for the radial blur. Ours is at the bottom, so grab that center point. You can actually move this around like that. So pull this straight down to the bottom, either right at the bottom of the page. There we go. It's now going to be blurring from that bottom point, so it'll be Smallest amount of blur here and the greatest amount of blur at the top. Choose OK. And there we go. It gives us that nice kind of soft blur up here. It's harder down there and it's softer up there. So that's our soft rays. So you now have two options. You have your hard rays and you have your soft rays. Or you even can combine the two if you want to be a little more, bit fancier. We'll use the soft rays for this video. OK, background's done. Let's now put in our type. Top type is the easiest, so we'll get that top type out of the way first. I'm going to reset our colors to black and white. And let's change this over here to white. And change to our type tool. Now that should automatically copy that color over here to the type color. If it doesn't, just click on this and then choose your color. Okay, we have that on white. That's fine. Now the typeface I'm using for this one is pretty standard. It's just a Times New Roman. And it's way down at the bottom of the list. I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse and just scroll way down here, bottom of the list. And we'll find in here Times New Roman section is right in here. I want bold italic. There you go, Times New Roman, bold italic. And on the size on this one, let's make this one 60 point, which is a standard size. There we go. And the type is centered. Okay, so far so good. Regular type, nothing fancy on this one, just standard horizontal type. And let's just type that in. Way to go, and three exclamation points and choose OK. We can now center that on the page. It should snap to the center. If it doesn't, I'm going to put in new guidelines on this, just the center guide. Let's clear our guides. They're hidden, so I just cleared those. And let's do a new guide. And I wanted a vertical guide, and I want it right exactly at 3 inches, which is the middle of the page. Perfectly. There we go. And we can now just tap that right onto that guide. We'll, we'll figure out the up and down when we get to it. I'm going to make the T here capital while I'm thinking about it. There we go. Make them all capitalized. And we're still centered. Okay, there's the top. Now I want to have a drop shadow on this one. So let's go up here to Layer and layer style, style settings, drop shadow, and it looks like we're already there. Let me look a little bit more here. I think I'll take my size up to 9. It just softens it down just a little bit. The larger the number, the softer the shadow. Sometimes it's just a little bit softer. The distance 5 is okay. It's just out just a little ways. And opacity is fine at the default of 75 and choose OK. Alright, our top text is done. Let's now put the grad at the bottom, our grad text at the bottom. Again, that's the second easiest here, so do that one second. Now this is a different typeface, but same color and so forth. Go back to our type tool. There we go. And we're going to be changing the typeface now over to an Arial. So that's way at the top of the list. So I'll just use my wheel on my mouse and just scroll to the top of the list. And once you find our aerial section, here we go. There's the aerial section in here. Now what I want is aerial bold, which is right there, just a straight aerial bold. Let's choose that one. We'll stay with white. That's fine. And then leave that at 60 points. That's fine as well. So everything else is okay. Click in here and just type in grad and choose okay. And let's just make sure that's centered. There it goes, kind of snaps this. And you can pull it down a little ways. It'll, it'll be down here somewhere. 
Now I have two styles on this one. I have an outline, a thin outline, and then a thicker outline. Let me show you how that's done. Let's do this first outline first. Layer, layer style, style settings. And we're doing a stroke. That gives us that outline in there. And right now it's at three on the size. That's fine, 100% opacity, that's fine as well. Outside and black, so there we go. That takes care of the thin black outline. You can adjust you know, these settings if you want to to change the look a little bit, whatever you feel like doing. But this is good for our start. Now to do the thicker outline, it's a little bit different. I'm going to take the grad layer up here, and let's make a new layer out of this. Just drag it up to the new layer button, makes a copy. I'll pull this one down below this grad. I'm going to call this one grad white, and this one's going to be grad blue. There we go. Now on this, we're going to be changing that outline. Same text as changing the outline. So let's double click where it says FX, brings back our effects in here. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to change the color in here. Click on that, and you can just actually grab that color now from the dark end of the stroke up here. So you just click on that and then get that darker blue from that, from that stroke. Or you can choose a different blue if you want to in here. Now the one that I chose is 7CB8FF. So I began with the one that was up here, and I just went a bit darker on that. Now at the, the top here, this is real rich color, so it's full, full saturation, full brightness, and right up in there. So there we go. Now that I have the color in, all I need to do is change the size, make this thicker. So I'm going to change the size here to 6, and you see how we begin to see it around the edge in there. Let me change it up to 12, and see how it gets even thicker. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're just going to be taking this slider and slide this over like that until we get that outside. Now what you want is to watch these intersections in here and right when those disappear, which is right about there, there was a little one right down here. When those disappear, that's the point that you want. Mine is at 35 in here. And that's pretty good. You just want to get it just thick enough. Notice it's almost as thick as the thickness of the letters as well. Let me just back that up a little bit. I'm going to can do one more thing. I'm going to cancel this and just zoom in on this so you can see that better what I'm talking about. Just bring that up. There we go. Okay, go back to our grab blue, double click. I'll type in my letter here 7CD8FF for my blue. And double check that should 7C. B, there we go. Choose OK. And then I'll bring this size up. And notice how I bring that up. We get these little pieces in between up here, right here, right over there. Bring it up until those go away. The last one to go away is going to be the one in here. So that's one you want to watch. So pull that up. And as soon as that one goes away, which is right about there, that's where you want to be. You might want to go just one more step. That says 32. I'm going to go 33. Just a little bit of a buffer on that. Choose OK. And that gives us that nice big outline around that. There's a thin black is the top layer up here. And then the big thick blue is the bottom layer. All right, let's just bring our picture back in again. So there's a second bit of type. Let's now do the last bit. I'll go up here to the top of our layer. And for this one, for the 2016, I'm using a different typeface, real, real thick, fat typeface. And let's go over here to our type tool. And I'll bring this one up. This is also a pretty standard typeface. If you don't have it, you can find it easily enough online for free. Just type in Berlin Sans Bold, which is right there. So Berlin Sans Bold, font, just type in free font, and you'll find it downloadable someplace online. It's, again, very, very standard typeface. But any real fat typeface will do on this. It doesn't really matter. You know, this is good. Arial Black is good on that. The Bauhaus is not too bad. It's not quite as thick, but it's not a bad one either. There's the Arial Black. So any good, just good thick typeface is fine for this. So I'll choose that one. Now we want to have this fairly large. So I'm changing this to 132. So it's a little more than double the size of that. Now actually I'm on that type layer still, so let me just undo this. There we go. And let's put in a new layer first. 
before I do that, back to the type tool. Okay, now it's not going to mess this up. Okay, so back again, Berlin Sands FB Bold and 132 for our typeface. That's our basic setting on this. Let's just click in here in the middle and 2016, choose OK. So there we go, there's the basic type. Now we're going to be doing a couple of fancy things to this type to give us that fancy look. The first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be filling this with a yellow to orange gradient. So let's take a look at our gradients. Go over here to our gradient tool and click on that little arrow here and you get our, our drop down. Let me pull so you can see that. And right here there's this real standard one orange to yellow. Double click on that. And let's click on our first option here. You can use any option you want. I'm just using the first one, but any of these will also give you interesting effects as well. It's up to you how you want to handle that. And we're going to be filling this with this gradient. Now to do that, I need to select just those letters. And the way you do that is to hold the control key down and click on the icon here where it says T. Click on that icon and that selects just the contents of the layer. There we go. Now we can take our gradient and I'm just going to grab up here and pull down. Now, the layer needs to be simplified. That's fine. I'm going to cancel just for a second. And let's just make a copy of this. Again, I like doing backup copies on things. I'll hide that one just in case. We're not going to need it, but just in case. So if you see this, choose OK. It then simplifies that layer like that. Or you can right click and do simplify layer. I always make a backup cover like this. You know, maybe I want to use this same card next year. And in that case, I can just change the text because I have my type layer saved. So saved and then hidden. Okay, back up to our text. And I'll just pull straight down, let go. And there's that nice orange gradient in there. Okay, deselect. So that's our first step. Now we had that double or triple line outline around this thing, kind of a fancy outline effect on this. And the drop shadow. Drop shadow is the easy part. The fancy outline is the tricky part. Let me show you how that's done. Take this layer, drag it up here and make a new layer. So now I have another layer. Now on this one, I want to fill this with a different color. So we're going to again select this layer. So hold the control key down and select that layer. And I want to fill this with a nice blue. I'm going to start off with this blue in here and then change the color. You use this kind of as a starting point. Now, the actual color that I use, I'll show you what that is. Let's go over here and I'll just type this one in. What I used was 00AEEF. So, again, it kind of began with that, then I went a little bit greener, and then we're here to the right hand side. So, it's full saturation on this. And we're going to be filling this whole thing with that. Now, if I grab the paint bucket tool and click in here, it's going to feel kind of strange like that. You can try clicking on a few spots and hope that you get it right. But what you probably will have to do is take the paintbrush tool and mine set at 200 and just, you know, just paint in here like this. That guarantees that it all gets filled in just fine. Okay, and then we can deselect that. So I now have two layers. There's that layer. And then above that is this layer. This is going to be the thin part, the thin blue part of our type. Let's reselect this. Hold the control key, click on the icon that reselects it. And we're now going to contract that selection in a little ways. So that's select, modify, and contract. And I have my set for 15 pixels. Choose OK. That just shrinks it in like that. There you go. It just kind of shrinks in that selection. Notice it shrinks it in from both sides. Now that I have that selection shrunk down, all I have to do is hit the delete key. And that deletes that out. And what that does is it leaves me that nice blue outline around that gradient. And let's just deselect. Now I could have done a blue outline as we did down here. Just click on this and use the outline tool. But we're taking it one step further. I want to have this outline floating above the text. That's why I did it this way. Okay, two more steps to go and then we're all done. So we're still on this layer up here. 
we'll now do a couple of layer styles. Go up to style, you know, layer, layer style, style settings, and we're doing a stroke around that. You see, there's our stroke. If I pull that up, you see there's kind of the stroke effect in there. The first thing we want is we want to have the stroke white. So click on the color icon and drag to the upper left hand corner, making the stroke white. And you want the stroke to be just about half the size of that stroke. It's, it's a visual thing. And you bring it up just a little bit. I think right about there looks pretty good. That's right at 10. I think 10 is nice. Maybe 13. I think maybe 12. I'm going to do 12 in here. There we go. And that gives us that nice white outline. Now when I put a shadow on here, the shadow is going to be not just around the outside, but also on the inside. And that's why we did this as a second layer with the hole cut in the middle. So let's go to our drop shadow. Click on drop shadow. Now we need to change our settings so you can see this. I'm going to put the size at 3, which is fairly hard. We need to move this out a ways. See, there's the drop shadow coming up. If I go too far, you see you get kind of an outline effect in there. So you don't want to go too far. You want to come just far enough so we see as much of that as possible without seeing the edge up there. And I found that 25 works out fine for this. And I'll set the opacity at 100 so it's good and dark. Choose OK. And there we go. There is our way to go grad card. And again, we can have the option down here of the two backgrounds. There's the hard background. And there's the soft background. Up to you which way you want to go on that. Let's just drag this out here and zoom in a little bit so you can see this full size. There we go. And let's get rid of that guideline. Let's hide the guide. There we go. Okay. So there it is. There is the way to go grad. Now bringing it up, looking at this right now, looking at it critically, I think I can go a little bit thicker on the outline down here on grad. Let's just fix that one little touch. And that's the grad white right there. Double click where it says FX. You bring the size up just a bit, bring it up to six. That looks good. So twice as thick as I had. So I had it at three, went to six, and that looks fine. I think that's just fine. And there we go. There is how to do a way to go 2016 grad card. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 